At the Health Roundtable Innovation Awards in Sydney this week, um, one of the themes that came out of that was that it was good to share your information. So with that spirit in mind, I'm presenting the um, uh, presentation that I gave down there, which is uh, deploying complex information via a QR code. Uh, the key problem that I was looking at was how do you get complex information into the hands of your target groups? I'm working in perinatal mental health at the moment, and this is a version one of our referral pathway. And as you can see, it's pretty jumbled to look at. There's a lot of information to get across there in a hurry. So how do I actually get that into the hands of the people who need it? Who are the people who need it? Well, they're the clinicians who generate the referrals, mostly midwives, about 80% of my referrals come from midwives. Um, also child health nurses, GPs, um, obs and gynae uh, uh, doctors, but all of those people need that information. Maybe even more importantly than the clinicians is um, that perinatal women, so women who are either pregnant or new mums or even planning pregnancy, that they get this information in their hands because really in the end it's about them. I guess by definition perinatal women, women in their child um, rearing years are aged generally somewhere between 15 and 40, give or take a year or, or two at each end. Um, and so most of those women are, are digital natives. Um, I've found that 99% of the women who have been referred to my service have got mobile phones and many of them, I think most, I haven't really counted up, but I think most of them have smartphones. And so um, that just raises a few more opportunities for us that we wouldn't have had five or ten years ago. Uh, another aim of the innovation is to avoid and minimise referral bottlenecks and I guess or even though I'm talking about perinatal mental health um, specifically in my role, I know I'm not the only person in town who contributes to good perinatal mental health and so I want to make sure that the uh, alternatives to referrals are easily found and all of these aims are in keeping with the National Perinatal Depression Initiative and that has some uh, key performance indicators which include um, describing and smoothing out pathways to care, uh, promoting community awareness and building the capacity of, um, of clinicians who are supporting women in the perinatal period and perinatal women and their significant others themselves. Uh, baseline data was, uh, was this. This is a, uh, <laughs> a very smudged pencil and paper um, first draft of the referral pathways to local agencies um, up here where I work. And, um, and it was quite valuable mapping out what agencies were contributing to it. Um, a couple of the downsides of this is that the map was on paper and that piece of paper tended to live either in my pocket or on my desk, which meant that there was poor access for um, both my colleagues and my clients to getting this information into their hands because um, I did a little bit of number crunching there and there was no visits to my pocket and no visits to my desk. So I came to the conclusion that it's not very helpful to have a map if nobody can see it. So we made a few changes and the key changes we impl implemented were that we simplified the look of the referral pathway, had the same kind of content, just tweaked a little bit, um, and then we put it online and um, I've thrown up the um, web addresses there. And the bit that I really want to talk about today is that um, we added a QR code, QR standing for Quick Response Code. And we popped that down in the corner of the poster because we only did a very small print run. Um, and we wanted to put this poster up into antenatal clinic waiting rooms, um, in the lifts on the way to the waiting rooms, uh, near the um, staff desk uh, behind the antenatal clinic in the community health centres um, and online. But that we didn't really want to be handing out a printed copy to everybody. It just really wasn't a very financially viable thing to do. So we added on that QR code. And then we also got, with the um, help of um, one of the admin officers who I work with, thank you, Silke, um, she plonked that QR code onto uh, stickers for me, just patient label stickers, which, which would normally have the you know, name and address stuff on it. And uh, Silke was good enough to make them fit onto those little sticky labels, so it cost us nothing really. And then I had that QR code and I could do what I call um, ethical guerrilla marketing where I can put the QR code on related materials. So um, Beyond Blue, for instance, um, generate lots of stuff about postnatal depression. Uh, there's this lovely DVD um, called uh, Staying Connected, Staying Strong and, and some supportive 
um, posters around that. And again, I could just localize that by just throwing on the QR code and a few other bits and pieces around there. The other thing that I did was show, uh, get those posters out everywhere. Again, in the antenatal waiting rooms, on the lifts on the, waiting, on the way to the waiting rooms, in staff areas. Um, again, thanks to one of the admin officers, uh, Megan, um, she suggested that it might be a good idea to put these um, QR codes or the posters with the QR codes in the women's toilets in the antenatal clinic. So if somebody wanted to get hold of that information discreetly, they could, which is a really good idea. Thank you, Megan. And um, so we got those posters and the QR code out everywhere and I showed my colleagues and, and some of my clients how it works. A lot of my clients I found um, came already using QR codes, um, not so many of my clients. So what were my outcomes? Now look, you want to take this data with a pinch of salt, a really hefty pinch of salt. Um, I've, I've only got two pages on the web relating to um, uh, my work and one's supported by a QR code and one isn't and as you can see here the page that's supported by a QR code gets over twice as many hits as the one that isn't but look I'm very reluctant to give all the credit to the QR code because if you were to put the words um, perinatal and cans into a search engine it would also take you to that same page that's supported by a QR code so I don't think I, I don't think we should oversell um, the, the driver of the QR code, but, but just, just to recognise that it has got some utility. Um, and as you can see, that the, QR, the page supported by a QR code has had 750 hits in that time period where the one without had 321. Um, yeah. What were the lessons that we learned? Um, well, QR codes allow complex information to be taken home in a simple and discreet manner. Uh, QR codes might drive some web traffic, but um, they're not a Google killer. Uh, the search engine keywords still count. And QR codes are, are just part of a broader strategy. Um, interestingly, uh, pregnant women and new mums seem to be better prepared for using this um, information technology than many of my colleagues. Um, and uh, that was a, a interesting finding. <laughs> um, QR codes only impart information. There's nothing really to fear about them. Um, they're, they're easily adapted to other settings and users so you could put on uh, websites or, or just plain text up to about uh, 240 characters I think about you know three sentences worth you can make a QR code take you to a phone number or an email address or even to a, a location so you could put um, perhaps on an appointment letter for an x-ray department you could say oh well the x-ray department's on level two block D and, um, and underneath that have a QR code and if somebody scanned that into their smartphone that would show them how to find um, Block D and take them there. Um, and then the other two learnings were that um, QR codes are embarrassingly easy to create and use. You don't need any skill at all. If you can find your way around a search engine, you can find your way around creating a QR code. And the cost of it is uh, nothing in dollar terms and just takes a little bit of time. So that's the guts of the presentation. It's probably time that you should try it for yourself now. So to do so, you, you probably wind up needing to um, uh, pause this presentation so you can hold on to that um, uh, QR code on screen. But just follow these seven easy steps and it'll take you from QR novice to QR nerd in no time. Step one, get your smartphone, then go to your app store and search for a QR reader. When you find one, select a free version and download it. Open it up, just follow the instructions. It's very simple. You line up using the camera on your phone, you line up uh, this QR code into the middle of the, the scanning screen. It will scan it for you automatically. You'll be amazed. And then the last thing you'll do is you'll ponder and discuss with your colleagues, how could our workplace use this technology? Thanks for listening.